a moment that was no doubt marked by our capacity for learning. Because culture, our culture, is only transmitted by copying. Our capacity to assimilate information is without a shadow of a doubt the most developed in the entire animal kingdom. We are the least instinctive animals, but in exchange, we have specialized in learning, in associating, and thus in imitating. The better part of our sciences, arts, and technologies all owe something to pure plagiarism, some better than others, which at the same time is the result of observing that which surrounds us. It's no secret that we have observed animals from the very earliest stages of our development. We needed to understand them in order to defend ourselves from them and to hunt them. We painted their likenesses on the walls of our sacred caves and on the ceramics we used to heat and carry our food. And over time, thanks to the accumulation of our knowledge, we discovered in nature much more than we aimed to. Normally, creativity requires a starting off point. For us, the living world has been quite a fertile muse. Primitive clay and earthenware objects made by our ancestors have helped anthropologists define and classify cultures with respect to time and location, according to their shapes and artistic styles. We once again believed that only we could have thought of such forms and the way to use a hollowed out gourd. But neither the work done with those materials nor their various applications, not even the most practical designs, were originally human. Many species, in fact, and much earlier on, knew the versatility of the mixture of earth, water, and a little chemistry. No doubt, birds' nests and the techniques birds and insects use to build their homes served as an inspiration for our earliest artisans. But these masters would find many new possibilities for mixtures of earth and water. If after drying and hardening, it could protect the young of other animals for months and even years at a time, it was evident that it could also serve as an excellent insulation against extreme temperatures, and of course, hold and preserve foodstuffs while protecting them from parasites. And when mixed with plant fibers, this muddy blend could obtain a remarkable consistency. And with it, with this adobe, bricks could be made, which would sustain civilization over the longest period of human history. Cities built of adobe, earthenware bowls, and clay pots, even magic. Perhaps the preservative properties this versatile material had gave some ancient shaman the idea of using it cosmetically in order to take on a more powerful image that might transmit a sense of durability, of immunity, properties associated with the earth itself. By covering themselves in mud, perhaps people were trying to lengthen their lives somehow. Or maybe it was just another case of observing nature, of copying animals, and almost unwittingly realizing that mud could serve as excellent protection against blood parasites and other potentially harmful attackers of the skin. And man saw that this was good. So good, in fact, that this protection against insects and the diseases they carried really could lengthen a person's life. We were able to take advantage of this material for construction, as an unguent, and as a basic element of culture. But we didn't discover it, not really. Animals showed us the way.
All human prehistory is rife with examples just like the one involving clay. An infinity of materials and substances were revealed to us, if you will, by animals we too often consider inferior. Could it be that we consider ourselves superior without reason? Wasps, for example, shape their hives with a special, extremely light and resilient substance that would play a major role in redefining man's time on Earth. The passage from prehistory to history was written on paper. Paper from the hives of wasps. By chewing wood and mixing it with their saliva, these insects have essentially made liquid cardboard, a rudimentary type of paper that they shape with their jaws into fine laminae. This then dries quickly and serves as the perfect material for tough, resistant incubating niches. Beehives are constructed using a different material, wax. And in the wax, the bees store their honey. Early man took a while longer to discover that it was practically impossible for bacteria or fungi to reproduce and proliferate in a beehive due to the fact that these superorganized little insects also know how to make highly effective antibiotics. Spider webs also have antibacterial properties, which make them a perfect pantry, though perhaps their most relevant qualities are their elasticity and strength. In fact, a spider web is superior in this respect to nylon and even steel. Spiders, wasps, and caterpillars drew our attention for another reason too. A revolutionary understanding of geometry and order. It truly is incredible how many things are done or made by animals that don't confer even a smidgen of an inkling that these beings are anything other than simple living structures doomed to perish. In keeping with these parameters, both animals and humans form part of the same whole. Workers and engineers, some more qualified than others, who carry out their instinct for survival. Sometimes with work, trial and error, and sometimes with nothing more than selection and death. The apprenticeship that we have done with nature has impetuously directed the steps of development of man and his cultures. At times, these steps have been slow and costly. At other times, they've been authentic leaps and bounds. The Silk Route is one of history's most important developments with respect to contributing to the establishment of bonds and links between the peoples of Europe, Asia, and Africa. If from one place came brilliant thread made by caterpillars, from another came fabrics designed by artisans who had observed birds. In each and every corner of the world, there were different wells of inspiration.